Okay, it is. Okay, go. Hi, this is Ed from Ponderific. Today we're over here at the, the Souter residence up in Beaumont, and what we have is a pondless waterfall here, and today we're going to put in some lights into the pondless waterfall. We're actually taking out old lights that were in place here, and we're going to replace these lights with something a little bit better. It's pretty decent light, but it only lasts but so long. Um, they're pretty, uh, we use those a lot, and but this is a slight upgrade on the lighting. And what I want to show you today is how to properly connect in the field and make additions to your waterfall or pond. These are a light, it's called the Vista Professional Aquatic Submersible Light. It's a model 4217, it comes from Vista. This is the box that this light will come in. Also comes with complete instructions on what to do and what not to do to properly install one of these lights. Inside of the box, you're going to have a light that's well packaged, well put together. Comes with a little small package that has a lighting baffle plate and some grease filled wire nuts, or I should say some silicone filled wire nuts. Those are fine in the field, most people use them. Um, myself, I like to do something a little more long term and I'll use some small uh, electrical connectors with some heat shrink tubing and we're going to crimp these together for the long haul because these wire nuts can come off and get bumped off and you're only as good as the last tightness of the turn that you make on your connections. Maybe you put a lot of electrical tape, maybe not. This is a little bit longer term connection. But I think we'll go ahead and make one of these connections first and then we'll put the baffle plate in. So take your pliers, I like to use the Kleins. I'm not an electrician, we just do a lot of our own wiring. But kind of strip back lightly, keep your trash in one spot where it's nice and easy, you can go back and pick it all up at the same time. But uh, strip back your wire, cut your excess off here that we're not going to need. And when your strippers are new, they'll probably be a little easier to use than these ones. But so, uh, pull all of this off as much as I can get off and get down to the wires. Once you get down to your wires, then come into the appropriate size gauge size wire. We're approximately a 14 gauge wire here. I don't need very much to go inside of the butt connector, so I'm going to actually strip off just barely enough to go inside each one of the ends of the connectors. Twist them tight on each one. Grab one of your electrical connectors, slide it inside, Take a pair of your lineman's crimpers. I always like my jaws at the very bottom. Just easier for me to maneuver it that way. Push with one hand, make sure your wire is still inside. Push in, crimp down, hold it really tight. Throw a second hand on it, crimp it down. It should be so tight you have to push it away from the jaws. Okay, and you know it's not gonna come off. Grab yourself a second connector. Push it into the inside. Grab your your crimpers again with the jaws facing to the sky. Push your wire in back inside and push down again and give it a double push. Okay, now take a little bit of your heat shrink tubing and enough to easily go over the size of your connector but then a little bit in addition to it because you're going to crimp that down. I mean you're going to heat shrink this around with the small butane lighter and you want to know that you've got enough to slide as we're going to do right now. The next step is to go ahead and slide your heat shrink tubing all the way around your, your, your electrical connectors. So push this through. It should go all the way through. Sometimes it takes a little coaxing. And a little pushing and, and shoving to get this to go through. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and run this a little differently. Stay with me. We're on the same project here. Take the wires that you're going to crimp. I think this is a slightly more stout wire. And I think it'll make it a little easier for me to push. Actually, I'm going to do this a little differently and slide this first right on over the wire. One, so you know you're already in place. But two, um, 
I think this is a little more stout of a wire and it'll make it a little easier to push it on through over our other our, uh, our electrical connectors. So now we're back to where we were on square one. Again, strip off just enough wire, you know, that you can have enough to slip inside of these connectors. Twist them tight, going up and grab, and with low voltage wiring, there is no polarity. So I can go here, or I can also flop it around and I can go this way. If I have a lot of lights, I try to keep whites to whites, blacks to blacks, but there is no polarity. So I'm gonna be fine right here, exactly how I've got them going. Again, go back, get your jaws in there, push your wire in, pinch it down good and tight. Nice, that looks good. Grab your second wire, push it in. My hands are a little shaky today. Okay, slowly push it back inside. And grab your jaws, your crimpers. Crimp wire down good and tight. Okay, what we've got now is a connector that is good and tight. But this makes it a little easier with this kind of wire because it's a little stouter. Just a little easier for me to slide it right on up over than the other wire that we were working with. Now I can push it until I get about half of this sheet shrink tubing on each side of the connector in the middle. Take your butane lighter, and hopefully there's no breeze like there isn't today. And if you take your lighter, you can apply it to your heat shrink tubing Can you capture it, Rick? Mm -hmm. Come all up and down the length of your tubing. What you're making is a leak-free connection here. Okay, slide it to the side. Come over to your second wire. And put your lighter back into motion again. And apply the flame to the whole length of your heat shrink tubing. This will pull itself up or suck itself up really tight around the wire in such a way as to not allow moisture to come inside and foul this connection up. You can go over this if you want to with a little bit of electrical tape if you really want to, to make sure you're really extra good and tight. I like this. We're nice and tight here. Okay, the next step that I want to go over and show you on the Vista lights is how to properly install the baffle plate. We're doing this all in one installation. I've got a nice pocket right down below where we're going to install this waterfall light. So once you've got all of the screws loosened on the flange, you'll see that Vista has produced a really nice light that has one of the best gaskets in the industry for keeping these liquid tight where you don't go through bulbs because the fixture is fouled all the time. I've had these lights in waterfalls and ponds for five and six years and still the same bulb is in place. So they're a little more than, than some of the average lights that are on the market, but I think they pay for themselves in the long haul because of less time maintenance and less time replacing bulbs. Not to mention the cost of the bulbs or the repair technician that's coming out to do the work for you. Okay, presto change of the bulbs you can see, or the gasket you can see is, is a nice o-ring gasket and when I take it off, the first thing I always do is to put it right back in the slot where it's going to go. This is a small uh, bulb, it's a 20 watt rated bulb, these are a halogen bulb. You can replace and, and adapt these or retrofit these to an LED. You can also change them from 10s to 20s. They'll even accept a 24 volt rated bulb. These are 12 volt bulbs. Bulbs. The next step that we do is to go ahead and put the baffle plate in. And the baffle plate again comes from the Vista light. And I'm going to take it out, save the wire nuts for a different project. There's a little bit of a thin film on the back side you've got to peel away here. Once you peel away, you're going to see a very shiny surface come and shine through. Once you peel away the back side. And we're going to want that shiny surface to be facing towards the light to scatter the light for us. Inside of each one of the lights, there's a couple of small pegs here that are going to line up with these pegs. Slide very carefully. 
your baffle plate back down inside, keep pushing until you pop through. On each side of this, once you hear the second pop, you've got a baffle plate that's ready to go back onto the fixture and into the waterfall. The next step is to carefully line the cover of your aquatic light back onto the top. Take your trusty screwdriver and just like applying a tire, rim back onto a trailer. Do it in a star pattern. One little bit on each side at a time. Or a crisscross, applesauce, whatever you want to call that. And I wouldn't recommend using any electric devices on this, small cordless devices. You'll over tighten them and strip the threads. It's best to always tighten stuff like this with the small screwdriver. And then till they're hand tight. You see I'm finger tight right now. Give it a little tiny bit extra over and above finger tightness. Not too much. Come to this side once more, a little bit. And finally here, and just a little tiny bit. That's all we need. Now this light's actually ready to go and get tucked into a pocket. And I've looked for a place on this waterfall where I think this will have the maximum impact. And there's a small alcove or a little cave right in here. This light's gonna slide nicely right into this pocket. Okay, whoever built this did a good job. Actually, we came in and kind of rebuilt what somebody else did, and I specifically created a little alcove, a little cave for this light to sit in really nicely. And we'll partially hide it with a couple of rocks so you don't see much of the fixture, and especially hide the wiring. Once you've got the big rocks in place, you can push some little ones in there. But what you've got, once you get all the trash out of the way, is Is a nice waterfall light. Nice. And that's it. That's a completed installation. And I want to thank you for coming to check out Ponderific Landscape Construction and Design on this episode of Landscape Lighting. Have a great day.